The Lankan farmer had use for the art of creating plowshares for preparing his field for sowing with paddy. There were two basic models that were called for, one for tilling the dry soil where there was no water and the other was for preparing muddied soil. The kakulang nagula or the plow for the dry soil was in the drought and where the paddy farmer would need to sow his seed in anticipation of the rains to follow. When plowing the muddy fields, there were two or three models of plows that filled the need. Each appellation had the idea of a plow made of wood and shaped for its specific purpose. Whatever the nature of the soil, the farmers needed to have a brace of buffaloes which would engage with the farmer in tilling the soil in preparation for sowing. The farmer also needed to have a sturdy yoke to which the plow would be affixed. There was also a person who is skilled in the shaping and forming of the plow and one who was also adept at using the device to derive the greatest benefit. This individual or expert plowman would be on hand to support the paddy farmer. What is more, he also would be one who had fine knowledge in the handling of a brace of buffaloes who would be engaged in the field. After the preparation has begun, the air is rent by the sound of exhortation by the plowman as he cajoles his buffaloes into action and as he guides the plow through the soil. Once the yoke has been affixed to the plow and with the placing of the yoke upon the necks of the buffaloes, there is a ritual placement of the hands of the plowman on the hide of the buffaloes, accompanied by a worshipful stance. And this is symbolic of the expiation of sinfulness. And having begged forgiveness for the errors of the past, the process continues and these quasi-religious traditions are seriously kept as part of the culture of the plow. The plowing continues accompanied by the encouraging shouts directed all around with the view that such a chanting sound adds value to the exercise and also signals that the plowman is well able to muster the buffaloes to do his bidding. The lay of the land also influences those activities to an extent for different plow designs and settings are required for the specific terrain such that will be effective with the drier soil, the muddy and hardened soils that may have more sand and stones and so on. Some plowshares will be with some serration and some smoother and the soil quality will determine how deeply the plow must dig. All this is considered at the time the buffaloes are harnessed to the plow. Furthermore, the particular type of rice cultivar that is being grown will also determine how the soil needs to be furrowed and prepared. Some paddy varieties need a longer period of, say, seven months for ripening, others of shorter duration of a few months. These variables will also dictate the design of the plow to be applied in each case. So, while being a simple device and simply structured, the plow was nevertheless a vital tool and needed all the care and concern demanded by the craftsmen involved. All the raw materials were sourced from nearby jungle areas and therefore the process and construction of these wooden plowshares and equipment was eminently sustainable. And this explains how these methods could have been continuously pursued for centuries past until the present.